All right, Corey, thanks very much. It is 7.32 right now. It is a scene that is becoming all too familiar. Incidents that cause mass casualties in places where we should all feel safe, such as in Las Vegas two years ago and at countless schools across the country. Here locally, one hospital in Northern Virginia is teaming up with first responders to create a first-of-a-kind task force with one goal, to save more lives in the event of a mass tragedy. We're joined by Nate Heiner from Arlington County Fire Department. Also, Taryn Overman, the Associate Vice President for Emergency Services at the hospital. Great to see both of you this morning. Nate, let me start with you. Uh, how might this help and what type of, um, I guess, what level of emergency might this come into play? So this will come into play during any kind of man-made mass casualty events. So your active shooters, your vehicle ramming attacks, uh, anything that's easily going to inundate local first responders in the closest appropriate hospital. Uh, we see through multiple case studies that the first hospital closest to the scene is often overwhelmed with individuals who self-report to the hospital. And so what we're trying to do is address that through providing surge capacity at Virginia Hospital Center. And Taryn, how does it help having this, uh, you know, on board? Is it simply uh, just having more resources available? How do you look at this being beneficial? This is inc an incredible partnership between Virginia Hospital Center, Arlington County Fire and EMS, and Arlington County Police Department. It enables us to train and drill together. We provide educational resources to one another, and we work to break down the silos that generally exist, and that's generally what causes the problem. So with us working together, we're allocating resources, manpower, and expertise in the right place at the right time to better serve our community and the patients and keep everyone safe in the time of a disaster or a crisis. So a lot of times when we think about a, a, a mass triage incident, we're talking about the amount of physical space that exists and being able to handle the most patients. Are you reallocating physical space for this uh, to be able to bring in more patients or is it, is it a different process? I think in disaster management, there's multiple things that you do to make the most of the space that you have. So yes, we've looked at it with fire and EMS and with the police to maximize our space and our resources. And this will allow us to take care of every patient that walks through our doors. And you know, Nate, obviously uh, in, for all of us, not just in your line of work, you hope that something that this never happens. Uh, worst case scenario, how will this benefit uh, you as a responder uh, and your fellow responders more so than what we have in place now? So the way this will benefit first responders more is we all want to save the most lives as possible. And we want people that show up to the hospital to be able to have some sort of level of care prior to arrival. We're trying to enable our citizens through programs like Until Help Arrives or Hands to Heart to really enable the whole of community approach toward providing medical care. So if we show up and interventions are already done, we're able to save lives more efficiently. So this is the kind of situation where if there was a mass casualty incident, uh, it's not like the, the victims or the people at the scene would have to do anything different, correct? This is something where you would have the process in place to just get people to where they need to be. Sure, so one of the things that we're trying to do is we recognize that citizens are going to self-report to hospitals. What we want to do is be here at that hospital when they self-report to assist the hospitals in decompression and to provide basic life-saving stabilization care and possibly uh, send them to other appropriate hospitals once this hospital becomes overwhelmed. Well, listen, I know this is a, this is a, a first of its kind here in this area, uh, maybe in the, a much larger area. So we wish you the best. And, uh, but again, the bottom line is hopefully we don't ever have to use these services, but great to know that they are available if needed. Thanks both of you for joining us this morning. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. It is 736 right now.